Hey guys, Dorian Ray here. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a monsoon run to obliteration so I can unlock the skin for the bandit. Uh, I do have this other skills to unlock, but I'm not doing those today. So what we're going to be doing, obviously we're playing on monsoon. We're going to be have the artifact or command so I can choose my items. It just makes it a little bit more easy, especially if you're just going to try to speed through. I'm trying to keep this around thir the 30 minute mark. Artifact or sacrifice monsters drop items on death, but chests no longer spawn, and monster spawns are doubled, but monster health is half. So we're just going to jump right into it. So we already had our first item drop. This character, what you want to prioritize is crowbars. Crowbars just make you deal a shitload of damage. And a shitload of damage is what you want. I don't really need to go for any, like, attack speed or anything because i can shoot this gun as fast as i can fire the trigger the only thing attack speed does on this character is make reloading take less time and i don't really need to worry about movement speed all too much for a little bit because uh i have this ability which get, pretty much gives me an extra jump and makes me move a little bit faster i am missing a lot of my shots today so there we go we had another item drop this one, we are going to get Bleed. So Bleed goes well on any character, pretty much any any way you can just make yourself deal more damage, the better. Crit, Bleed, Crowbars. The more Crowbars you have, the more damage you deal. The more damage you deal in one shot, the faster you can kill enemies. And that is actually a really good sign. That is what you want to see, especially when you have the Artifact of Command, because you could just get this item, and now I can just immediately go straight to the boss, and I know I can win. This is the free win button. So at the three-minute mark, once or once I finish this, we're going to go to do the teleporter, and I'm just going to show you how it's an instant win button. I press the teleporter button. But this is another reason why you want to stack crowbars, because with your secondary ability, you can just one-shot everything within the first level. So right here, I'm going to grab another one of these, just so I can one-shot another boss. I'm going to grab one of these, just to give myself 10% crit chance. And this is the one downside to having more enemies spawn in. Because they do kind of swarm you. Their DPS does not go down. The DPS is the same, they just have half the health. So with that, we are successfully on our way. So now we can just go to the teleporter, and I'm leaving at the five minute mark. That is a good sign. That's usually what kind of pace you want to be on. So this place is pretty spread out, as you can tell. But it's actually pretty easy to find the teleporter. I can already see it back there. Alright, I'm going to die. It's fine. I didn't die. It's fine. So right here, I want to get stuff to make it easier to kill things. So what makes things easier to kill when they take more damage? So now, if something dies, they explode. Causing more damage around them. I always hate those things. No. So now that... Things are getting a little bit further away. I'm going to get some movement speed. I like uh, getting a few energy drinks just because sprinting is my main source of speed. So why not move 25% faster while sprinting? Now, I do need to get a few more crowbars because these guys aren't dying in one shot. So this is probably going to be a crowbar. Boom. Crowbar. I'm going to sacrifice 50% of my health to this thing. To get this, we have a Weeping Fungus, and then on this, we're going to grab that. I did not know these things could drop items. We're going to get another one of those. And now I'm really close to one-shotting those things. I do one-shot them on a crit, so that's nice. But yeah, now I have a little bit of a sustain with the Weeping Funguses, because they, while sprinting, heal me. I sprint a lot, so... Alright, going to get more crit chance... Because now that I have the Shatter Spleen, I don't really need to build Bleed. I just need to build Crit. 
And right there, we just instantly win. And then we can just go invisible, come over here, grab another one, and insta-kill the other boss. Four, three, two, one. Insta-kill. Boom. So now I'm going to get this. to see flat healing when attacked. I'm going to go for an infusion just for HP. And then we're going to go for this. So getting the Molten Perforator just makes it to where you don't have to build gasoline. Gasoline sets things on fire on death. But that's kind of meh. So, why not just set them on fire on hit? So right now we're on stage 3 at the 10 minute mark, which is about the pace that I like to see. So once we get a little bit more uh, stuff built, we can kind of move, move it a little faster. I usually try to take a few minutes on the first few maps just to gather items and whatnot. So honestly, right now... I'm at the point where I can just start that, this, and probably be fine. Do I want to do that? Not particularly. Mostly because of that. The more of these that you get, the easier your run is going to be. Because it just makes it to where you can one-shot the boss. So now that we got that... I can one-shot the boss with no problem. So we're just going to do that. We should get item drops during the boss fight. And we just look at one of them and say no. Then because of all the on-death effects that we have, the other one instantly dies because of the AoEs. And we get another yellow item under our belt. I'm going to get one of those, booth health and regeneration, which is something that we really need in Monsoon. And they just dropped a yellow item, so I'm going to grab this. Just make it to where on hit, I have a chance to shock enemies. All the on hit effects are great. Now, if I get a red item on this character, I want to go for the lucky foot. Or not the lucky foot. That's a different game entirely. Uh, I want to go for the 57 leaf clover, I believe it is. 57 leaf clover pretty much just makes it to where all of your on hit effects have double the proc chance to... To go off so my missile launchers uh they have like a 10 percent chance to go off and getting more of them doesn't increase that chance it just increases the damage so once i get the 57 leaf clover it will then have a 20 percent chance to go off which is really nice so we finished that stage a little bit early and that's okay because i now have enough items where i'm confident that i can pretty much finish this run no problem because of the items that we have like I said, I do want to focus on crit chance and crowbars. This character is not a, hey, I'm going to stand over here and shoot you from afar and whittle you down kind of character. He is a definitely a one-shot character. So the more damage that you do in one shot, the better. And usually when you're one-shotting things, when you first shoot them, they're at 100% HP. So if you could just one-shot them, that's even better. Ooh, I'll take that. So there are a few places on this map that... I know that there can spawn a legendary chest. So I'm going to try to check those. See if I can find a legendary chest. Just get some free items. One of them is in there. So we're going to go in there. See if we can find ourselves that legendary chest. It does spawn even when your enemies dropping items mode. And it's right here. But it's very expensive. So we need, do need to farm a little bit for it. But that's okay. And then we get our first red item. Now... I'm going to get the 57 Leaf Clover because it's really good. This is usually one of the first uh, items I get because it just makes proc chance so much easier. So I probably, at this point, I don't need to buy any more crit items. If you notice, every single shot that I am shooting right now is a crit. So now I want to try to farm out at least like two more items. So we are going to be starting to stack bleed chance. But we only need to get five. For the legendary chest, it's not a guaranteed spawn on this map, but it can spawn down there where we actually found it. It can spawn up there, and I've also seen it down there. I'm pretty sure there are other places where it can spawn, but those are the three that I know for sure. 
And if you really want to know, there's probably a place on Wikipedia or just the internet in general that you can find where the actual guaranteed locations are and just go find them. And that's what we can do to bosses with this build. Just like that, all the bosses are down. Now, at this point, this is when I do want to start getting movement speed. So I'm going to grab some, a Rose Buckler, reduce incoming damage while sprinting, which is really nice. It just makes things a hell of a lot easier. And then we're just going to stack crowbars because crowbars. So boom, now I have maximum bleed chance. So now what, do I, what am I looking for in white items? I'm looking for movement speed and a little bit of attack speed, maybe some damage reduction. So getting a few plates, not a bad idea. Uh, on this character, stacking backup mags is not a bad idea. So I'm going to grab one of these. And then also the turtle brooches or topaz brooch. I call them turtle brooches because they look like turtles. Stacking these, really good. Uh, teddy bears, really good. You don't need that many teddy bears. I usually get, get about three and call it good. I spent a little bit of extra time in this map just farming things, but we are now in Sky Meadow, stage five. So if you notice in the chat, it says the primordial bullshit has aligned with the moon. That's cool and all, but we don't want to do that. We're not going to try to go fight Mithrix. Now you might be thinking, why aren't we going to go fight Mithrix? Isn't that like the way you win this game or unlock the achievement it is it, or at least it's one of the ways or you can just fight things instantly slay everything not have to do a very hard boss fight and then just go obliterate yourself at a at a monolith that seems like the easier option to me also it's more fun and honestly like once we get to this point in the build you don't really need to worry about much in the terms of like survivability or damage because as you can tell i am pretty much one-shotting everything save for like a few enemies that guy was not the exception i thought he was but he was not and that's okay we're gonna grab myself one of these just to make it a little bit easier so right now i don't really need to worry about doing anything specific so we're just going to do the teleporter right now. So these guys spawn in. We're just going to try to take them out immediately. And we succeed. Now it's just crowd control. So we're going to grab more of these. Because the more enemies that I can just one shot, the better. And then we're also going to grab some goat hooves. Uh, attack speed isn't something that you really need to worry about on this character, especially if you're one-shotting everything. Uh, the only thing that attack speed does with this character is make it to where your uh, gun reloads quicker. That is it. You can already fire as fast as you can click. So it's not that big of a deal. So right here, we're going to grab this thing. This makes us very, very tanky. And we're going to grab that along with it, which makes us even tankier. So pretty much what that was an item that if I ever get hit, I heal. I now have two of them, which means they stack and I get a lot of healing whenever I get hit. I have the damage reduction while sprinting from the Rose Buckler, and then I have the propulsion plates. But just make it to where I take less damage. So you saw that guy right there. You know what? I'm going to let one of these guys shoot me. Come on, shoot me. Shoot me. Shoot me. Yeah, I took like 17 damage right there. So not even worried. All right. And as you can see, we're back in the Titanic planes. And these guys are starting to... Those guys take a little bit to take down. But at this point, we're, we are so powerful that it doesn't really matter what we get. So we're just going to stack more crowbars so I can just do that to things. And then everything is just going to 
happen in succession from that. Just like that. And that guy went invisible for some reason. Weird. Start that. And let's go. And as you can see, we have a lot of enemies spawning now. And that is not very cash money. Because I don't get any extra items for dealing with all this bullshit. But, because I deal so much damage and have a lot of on-hit proc effects, everything dies very quickly. So I don't really need to worry about hoppo feathers all too much on this character. So usually you would want to get like a double jump or something very quick on a character. It just enables movement. But this character starts with a double jump in his ability. Technically a triple jump if you cancel it. So I don't have too worry about that. And that, that ability is on such a low cooldown it's inconsequential. So one, two, three. I use my right click to cancel out of it. You can shoot, you can do anything else, you can wait for the timer to run out. It's it's really just up to you. But now, what am I looking for in this run? Honestly, at this point, I have my build already set up. I don't really need anything else. So what am I looking for? What do I want? What I want is to see a celestial portal. And that guy was trying to spawn camp me. That was the game saying, I hate you, please die. What do we say to the God of Death? Not today. The one thing I don't like about this map is it is hard to find the teleporter if it's in a weird spot. There's so many nooks and crannies on this map that it is hard to track down. It can be behind a wall. It could be hidden in the corner. Oh, it's not over here. Okay, so I'm not seeing it in the general areas over here. So it's probably hiding in a corner. Yeah, see... Hit it in the corner, all the way in the back. Not the best spot for it. You know what? We're going to grab this thing. That's just going to give me a passive heal. And boop. Now at this point... I could do with some attack speed. Because right now, with the DPS and everything, reloading is kind of getting in the way of me doing max DP DPS. So what's the secret? You just get, some, get a few soldier syringes. It's going to make your, like, one or two, and you're going to be set. I don't want that. It's fine. So now we're just going to get one of these, just to really seal the the deal in this victory now if anything hits me they're also going to get hit with a razor blade so right now i see the blue portal uh, orb spawning around that's not what we want so blue portal appears that brings us to the lunar item shop i don't want that what i want is a celestial portal to spawn so I heard an item over here earlier, so we're just going to kill those guys so I don't get interrupted. And we're going to buy a lot of Will-O-Wisps. All right, so in stage eight, usually this is when a Celestial Portal spawns. There we go. We got the, the thing. Celestial Portal appears. So now all I have to do is speed run to the, the end, which is over there, which means I have to go through a bunch of bullshit just to get over there. But this is fine, because as you can tell... It does not matter. I'm already here. So as you can tell, I have a lot of chain reactions going off, and that's what you want. That's how you win a run. Just chain reactions. If you can shoot one thing in a group and everything in that group dies, you are you are well on your way to victory, my friend. And we have some time, so we're just going to mess around and get some of this stuff. And that is the power of razor wire. Something hit me, set off a chain reaction, everything around me died. 
so razor wire is actually a really good item if you want to go for a hey you can't kill me but i'm doing all of the damage to you build it's actually probably one of the most effective ways to play this game so right here i don't need to worry about this guy he's probably going to shoot at me and then he's going to die or he just doesn't want to shoot at me that's fine too you know what it's okay and with that, we go into the Celestial Portal, and we end up here. A moment fractured. So going into the Celestial Portal will spawn you in this area. It's called a moment fractured. Pretty much what you want to do is you want to jump all the way down here, platform all the way down. Now, if you have a character who can float, fly, sling themselves vast distances, you can usually make it there in without actually platforming. But because I didn't invest in any extra jumps on this character, I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. But in order to get the skin, we just obliterate ourselves. We just press E on this twice and boom, achievement unlocked. Good to go. Fate unknown. Run complete. Bandit mastery. We got the skin. Now, obviously, because of how powerful the run was, I could have gone longer. If you want to go all the way to stage 20 on Mount Soon, you can do that. Was my build powerful enough to take on Mythrix? Probably. But honestly, I find this a faster way because when you go to Mythrix, you have a lot of running in that area. You have a lot of shrines to do. You have a big boss fight that you may or may not win. So this is just a, obliterating yourself is just a guaranteed way to get this unlocked. I hope this helps. See you next time.